Okay, here we are, NAMM 2012. We've stopped by the Abbott booth and we want to talk to Tony Caridi here about Pro Tools 12, the new licensing, uh, new features, uh, some new plugins that are available. So uh, tell us what's going on with Pro Tools. Well, with Pro Tools, it's very, very exciting news here today. We made some really big announcements. Um, first of all, we announced Pro Tools First, which is a completely free version of Pro Tools. It's going to be downloadable uh, in the in the coming, you know, sometime within this quarter. Um, it's a little bit of stripped down, but it has all of the, the kind of key core functionality that a that a that a standard Pro Tools uh, software would have. But it's completely free. It's limited, 16 tracks. You can have up to three uh, three projects. Uh, those projects are cloud-based, so just like if you're familiar with almost like an Evernote workflow where your stuff is kind of always available no matter where you are, you have the similar similar type of thing. Um, so very, very exciting. Um, at the same time, we released about um, 17 plugins, uh, guitar effects plugins, kind of stomp box type things that came directly out of the 11 rack. And those are going to be, you know, purchasable directly from within Pro Tools first at, you know, prices that start at about a cup of coffee, you know, to get, to get going. Um, in addition to that, we really announced Pro Tools 12. Pro Tools 12 is really exciting because, first of all, it sets a stage for Avid Cloud Collaboration, which is a technology we started showing um, back last year uh, when we showed some collaboration between various Pro Tools systems. Well, this technology is going to be coming into Pro Tools with Pro Tools 12, um, in addition to marketplace integration, allowing people to have the kind of convenience of in-app purchases directly from within Pro Tools without having to restart the app. Um, also, content marketplace so that artists or producers can um, sell and monetize their work right from within Pro Tools, kind of have a marketplace to connect with other media professionals directly from within the app. And also, a really exciting component of the marketplace, marketplace that we're talking about here is kind of a, a community site, which is the, uh, the uh, artist community. The artist community is kind of like our, our social, our version of a social network like a LinkedIn or a Facebook. And what's really exciting there is, you know, as people work, um, rem get more and more used to working remotely, and more and more the expectation is that no matter where you are, you should be able to connect with them and work with them, and, you know, it shouldn't matter if somebody's over in the UK or in Asia or in the East Coast, for that matter, they should still be able to get going and work no matter what, because, you know, so many people have a high-speed internet and, and, you know, why shouldn't they be able to do that? The fact of the matter is it's been really hard to you know, the workflows haven't been there. It's been very much this clunky push-pill process. You throw it up on your you know, Dropbox or you put it up on Google Drive or something, but then there's all this versioning control and like, oh, did you change this and what did you change? And I don't know, the mix is different now. Build all that stuff in with Avid Cloud Collaboration. Um, the artist community component of it is, um, is kind of the missing link. So if you're looking for somebody to, to work with and you need, you need somebody who can, uh, you know, play, um, I don't know, horn really well. You need a horn part, you need a background singer. You would be able to find them and connect with them and make those relationships right on the Avid Artist community. You can be able to listen to their work, listen to examples of their work, maybe read ratings about uh, from other people who have worked with, these, with, with this artist or this particular musician or composer or uh, engineer or producer. So they'll have their own profiles. They'll have their own profiles. They can follow people. They can connect with people. You know, they'll be able to um, put examples of their work up there um, and, then, like I said, sell their work up there as well. Um, so a lot of things coming. The, 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 um, the so community the site. Collaboration, is it, is it kind of a push-pull thing like uh, it's been around for a while or is this actually something with the speeds that you're getting across broadband that you can actually have somebody recording from one location? Uh, so is it like a real-time thing or not? Is that the question? When it's, are we going to get our real time? <laughs> well, so you know, a saxophonist can play from Georgia, right? And you can be recording it on your system. You know, you have a little bit of that today with um, plugins. Like, I don't know if you're familiar with Source Connect, but they've got this plugin where it kind of replaced the ISDN, and it's all integrated within Pro Tools. That that's something that is, um, you know, that that will enable those real time kind of workflows. What it doesn't do is it doesn't let people work, um, it doesn't let you really collaborate with others who are maybe changing parts and you know a lot of times you're going to want to work with somebody and you don't necessarily want to be there at the same time. Maybe there's a time zone difference that doesn't even allow that. Right. Um, so the kind of collaboration we're talking about is you know I changed the setting on that plugin and I did a, I, I, I did a uh, maybe another 
comp, you had a bunch of vocal takes. I did a different comp and I tuned one little part that was stuck out to me. That kind of, it would be like integrated. You open up your project on your side and you'd see those changes. Right. And you'd say, oh, this change, this change, this change. Do I want to accept it wholeheartedly? Do I want to accept it, accept it as a new playlist or new track altogether? And you've got versioning control and you have documentation within the app that, you know, so-and-so changed this or so you added this part or you did this. And this so is it's all software-based, right? It's 100% software-based. Because I, I remember uh, the Digi delivery system that you guys had a few years back, which was actually a hardware box, yeah, if I yeah. remember correctly. It sounds, it sounds very similar. Well, I, I, so you, it was similar in the sense that you had these kind of automated <laughs> workflows, so if I sent you something, you didn't necessarily have to be there to start the download, it would do it for you, but but it is very, it did not offer a real collaborative workflow like we're describing. Right. Um, you know, for instance, um, you, you could have a number of people contributing to the same project. I mean, so look at it this way, you have a project, it really lives in the, lives on, in the cloud. Completely secure, cloud-based environment, you could invite who you want to that project. You could select which components of that project you want to share, maybe just certain tracks. You might want to get, not give away all of your mixed secrets and all of your stuff, all the special sauce that you've spent a lot of time preparing. So maybe you just want to share stems. That's, that's really easy too. It's totally easy to just share maybe a bounced version or a frozen version of what you've done. But you can share the whole thing if you want. You can let people do, like I said, mix changes, automation changes, plugin changes. Add new tracks, add new MIDI parts, add new virtual instruments. And you also have workflows in there, so if I don't have the virtual instruments that you're running, you have some fantastic thing, I never got around to buying it. You have the option to share that with me as a totally committed track with a touch of a button, or as a frozen track, so that, so that if they don't I, have to have the plug They don't have to have the plug right. Or if you don't want to share, again, your special secrets about what you, you know, what you have in there, how you got to that sound. That's that's feasible too. Wow. So, um, yeah, so it's really, really exciting. So what's happened with Pro Tools 12, um, it's set all of the, all of the, uh, the technological foundation is in there. We're gonna be rolling out something called Early Access for Avid Cloud Collaboration, just, you know, in the next few weeks. What that is, is allows people to sign up to start using all of these collaboration features before it's actually available to the public. Part of this, part of the reason for that is we want, when this goes live to the general public, it needs to be 100% rock solid. Right. So this is a, a way for us to enable our really passionate users to get on this and start using it right away. I know I, for one, want, want to start using it, like, now. Yeah. Um, but it also lets us uh, kind of set up a way so that if there are holes in it, we know early on. We don't onboard, you know, thousands or tens of thousands or hundreds of thousands of users on day one and have a, some kind of a car crash happen. This allows us to really pressure test this thing little by little before we t really open the valve up. So the other ex exciting thing about Pro Tools 12 is the way we're going to be delivering updates moving forward and the way customers are going to be receiving them. Um, so up to this point, we've been selling only, you know, a traditional or perpetual license, a license that doesn't expire. Well, we're going to give our customers a lot more choice now. So in addition to being able to just buy the software outright like you have in the past, you'll be able to subscribe to it on either a monthly basis or a yearly basis. And the benefit there is as a completely new customer, instead of, you know, straight out of the gate having to dole up, you know, maybe a, for what is to them a substantial amount of money up front just to get the software to get going, they can just start with a much lower cost of entry subscription fee. So they're just paying for the software when they want to use it or when they need it. Um, and the, the, the subscription uh, prices start as little as $29.99 a month or uh, $299 a year uh, with no money up front, right? You can just get in as little as that. For students, you get it in as little as $9.99 wow. a month and for educators, institutions, that kind of thing. So it's really, really exciting. But if you already have Pro Tools, you've already invested in the platform, you get an even better deal because you've already spent the money up front. So for as little as 199 bucks annually, you're always on the latest version and you have a much higher level of support than you had before. And that works out to be as, I don't know, $16 and something a month. You know, it's like- and That's for the life of your Pro Tools. Yeah, that's an a the annual renewable right. upgrade. So you, you're, you never have to worry about you know, how do you get the latest version? Right. Did I buy it at the wrong time because, uh, you know, an upgrade's coming out soon? Well, no, because if you buy perpetual license with an upgrade plan, you're insured to get any upgrade that comes out in the next 12 months. 
And if you're subscribing, it, you automatically have the latest version. So we've taken that kind of risk out of it. It also frees up our engineering and our roadmap so that when we come out with something that's interesting, we don't have to stockpile and hold on to it so we have a whole bunch of them and then release it as a giant release. So we can provide these updates, provide these new capabilities much more frequently than we have in the past. Wow, that's a lot that's going on. One of, one of the things I do want to know is, is there anything different, new features? What's new in Pro Tools 12? So Pro Tools 12, I, I mentioned the cloud collaboration, the marketplace component. Uh, we didn't talk about metadata, but that's, that's part of it too. That's going to be released as an early access. I think we talked about that a little earlier. Pro Tools 12, um, really, there's, there's not a feature release. Okay. It's going to be coming, again, most of the, it, the underpinnings is, the, is the, the technological underpinnings for that future um, cloud collaboration and marketplace and all of that integration. Uh, the one thing that you'll see in Pro Tools 12 is the ability to have those in-app purchases. Okay. So if you are, you know, if you are working with somebody and you go, oh, you know, I really need that stomp box. You know, I want, I want to get that. Uh, prior, you know, we had a kind of a, a market. Can you rent the stomp box? There will be rentals. Yeah, there's rentals today as well as purchases. Um, but the really interesting, we're well, not interesting, but the, the the benefit or the the advancements we've made here is that you can do the in-app purchase without ever quitting Pro Tools or ever having to restart. So it's kind of like an app store experience. Right. So what, what kind of release dates are we looking at for a subscription, for collaboration? Yeah, so, subscript, so Pro Tools 12 is going to be available this quarter. Pro Tools first will be available this quarter. Um, so sometime in the next you know, a couple months. Uh, the collaboration capabilities, we're going to be rolling out the early access program in the next few weeks here. Uh, the ship date for that will be s probably sometime in Q2. Excellent. Thank you, sir. We appreciate Anytime. it. Anytime. Thanks for stopping by. Have a good one. NAMP 2015.